There we go. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cert Manager Development Biweekly Development Meeting. It's the 9th of February 2022. It's just gone five o'clock in the afternoon UK time. Uh, we've got a pretty light agenda today, so we might get finished a bit early. Um, we've got a lot of the usual suspects. We've also got Varun, who just said he's from, they're from Amazon. So uh, welcome. That's great to have you here. Um, there's, yeah, I, I don't see any reason to delay unless you wanted to say anything for him. That's your shout. I shall take that as a no. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I don't think there's much point going in doing introductions because we're the usual um, theme most of the time. So, uh, I'll just jump off straight into the thing that I added because I'll take that as being a. Uh, the privilege of the of the chair um i've not really got a huge like discussion thing that i wanted to kick off on this um this is the pr in question uh and the aim of this is essentially running like a linter like um go lang ci lint against certain manager will flag up many many things um relating to comments like this and they uh, ideally things would be have documentation comments not necessarily the most important thing in the world and uh, so i looked at, i looked at this pr and like there's nothing like josh spotted that there's a comment in the wrong place which i suppose is something wrong with the pr but like generally like th th this is harmless right it's adding comments it's not really doing any damage like th the problem is that a lot of the comments are kind of not useful um by way of example there is re a comment on resource name key which resource name key sets the value for the resource name key which doesn't help uh, this is a constant it doesn't it, that 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 comment doesn't help this might be described as a sort of low effort pr um but it it's it's not like it's not completely nothing but equally it's not really like doing much so i wanted to sort of get a feel the pulse of the team on this kind of thing I, i'm happy to close this uh given that the vast majority of these comments are not particularly useful um what do people think i think my i can hear more, more than one microphone it's a controversial topic i was gonna say um comments can become quite dyke shitty quite quickly um and before before i wasn't very good with comments and I spent some time to try and make myself be better at comments i guess it's always like a learning process but um my current stance my, the code i write my current stance is most nearly all functions are commented and if it's a exported type or function or whatever it certainly is commented um no matter what and that's just so that's just like a decision like everything will have a comment whether it's useless or not like that's just what it will be so therefore like it's nothing is surprising um so my feeling is like these kind of things like i'm happy to like merge just because like as you say it doesn't really do anything um but it would be better if these comments were like did actually have more useful information but i think that's just a function of the author not necessarily having all the context um of like what each of these things actually are um it's a bit waffly but i think that generally gets away like, like so it's my stance on these kind of things line 69 by the way on that file i think will break um or fail the test anyway for the go fmt thing because we've got a double new line but it's besides the point yeah it's a it's a reasonable position I, i'm very much a plus one on on uh adding comments to fun publicly exploited functions on newly written code like i think that's super valuable to do i fully agree uh, uh i will i will have to say something <laughs> go for it <laughs> I I disagree. 
they hide the important comments. That's that's my perspe perception. That there are so many comments here that I have a zero added value that they don't add value. They just add noise. And I wrote a blog post about comments, and I I said it's really important to write comments, but it doesn't mean that they always have to be here. And when someone writes a comment, writes a comment, it's intentional. It's like code. It is intentional. It it has a purpose. I agree that I I understand that IDEs show like I, I, like it, it has come up many times that people expect to have documentation on every exported thing. But I have to disagree on the fact that these comments are useless. Like maybe one or two of them are like they have they add something. But most of them are, how do you say, uh, something that repeats itself. Sorry, what? Superfluous? Yeah, superfluous. Sorry. When you say something, that means the same thing as what you said before. Uh, yeah, and a lot of these are wrong. Paraphrasing, yes. It's, well, that's a nice but also... controversial topic. I think in this case, actually, the problem is not with the PR. The problem is actually with the issue that they are referring to, which I opened. Um, I think the issue should have actually said what is the intention of of this work. Like maybe assuming that it was like suppose it was something that was like a good first issue, and I created, it, I probably should have noted because it actually fulfills what is described in the issue, which is that there are no comments and it does add comments. I didn't actually say that you should, um, nice. you know, as a person who writes like a first issue, you may have thought that this was what was supposed to do. I didn't link um, any kind of documentation that, um, you know, as Mel said, that describes what a good comment should be. So um, in this case, it's, I think it's the problem is the issue, not that much with PR. Like it should have said that, the, you know, you should, in order to fix this, you should actually kind of understand it and give some added value, if that makes sense. So it's it's funny. This is my uh, problem with a lot of the security checkboxes. Okay, so this PR fixes the Go report but it actually is a bad PR, I think, because a lot of the comments are yeah, superfluous. It's like, add one to i over the top of i plus one. And some of the comments are not correct or would be more confusing if I saw this in an IDE hint than, than reading the function signature. That's So I think it's unfortunate. Yeah, if the aim of the PR is to fix the Go report card, yes, it does do that, but it is not a good PR in my opinion it, sorry i maybe I'm, I'm i'll be mean saying this but it's really kind for the to for someone to to contribute to this but it feels like uh copilot has written go github copilot has written everything like copilot can be asked to do so, something like this Ah, sorry. Use less comments. I think there's actually quite interesting. So some of these comments, I think, are, are more valuable than others in that some of them fix existing comments to refer to the actual type, like they fix the name of the type in the comment, such as issue a constructor where the I was lowercase when it should have been uppercase, which is just, that's just a fix. So what I could do is just go through and say, keep those, but like, I'm not, I, I don't know. I, like, I, I don't think that's a useful way for me to spend time, really. I mean, they they're quite new to uh, go eight by this, so it's kind of hard. It's hard to contribute to set manager, which is a different problem. So they've seen this as a oh, my ID tells me where everything's wrong. And then I can type something, and it makes it not wrong. It's it's 
I, mean, I, just, I don't want to be harsh. Release team, right? Sure. Can't be new to go. Can he? Kubernetes release team is more about chasing people as far as to as far as I'm aware. Uh, from from what uh, James did. You I, I, okay. you look in the roadmap, make sure everything that's says it's target milestone is this is like in there by the code freeze. I'm a big fan of their um, GitHub page. Oh, it's like Old school, moving MySpace everywhere. Page. Yeah, yeah, GIFs yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Well, does anyone want to go through? Like, I can see now by reading it, there are a couple of comments that are good, but most of them just look like auto-generated. <laughs> I, I I started, so I'll I'll finish with it. Um, it makes me sound like I'm presenting a panel show. <laughs> I, <laughs> I reviewed it once, so I'll I'll go through and uh, I'll say the ones we want to keep, and I won't merge the the ones that don't really provide yeah. value. I think. And and make sure we say thanks for trying to yeah. do this. Because they they uh, did a previous PR as well, which got merged, and that one was much more useful, I, I think, than this one. So um, the heart's in the right place. Yeah, I, I I will take that as an action to go and do. Uh, oh, did you want to say something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say. I mean. I could have updated the original issue to add something along the lines of the goal of it still would should we like to add something useful just so that it's not the case that you know like would that that would just make it clearer to them so I'll do that sure sounds like a good idea um assuming there's no other comments on that topic we could move on um so the next the next issue on the agenda is server side apply of cert manager conflicts with CID fields modified by CA injector. I think this is you, isn't it? Yeah, I added that. Um, so that was in relation to um, to an issue that the user raised, I think, like a couple of days ago, and a bunch of people have like done thumbs up on that um it appears like that when you server side apply a cert manager you can't upgrade you can't upgrade from one point you can't upgrade from a pre 1.7 release to 1.7 release via server side apply the reason for that being that for cert manager crds um, up till 1.7 release, um, CI injects are used to inject CI bundles, um, which means that when you have previously deployed, you will have a you will have a CRD where all fields will be managed by you know your kubectl will apply, but the CI injects are um, then when you attempt to apply 1.7 manifest the cube kettle the server side apply will not be able to remove the ci bundle because the manager is ci injector as i understand um but it will remove the rest of the webhook config so previously like the there's this thing called conversion um conversion has conversion strategy which can be either webhook if you want to convert the crds or none if you don't Previously, we used to have webhook. In 1.7, it's now none. Um, and so the resulting CRD will have the CI bundle from CI injector from the previous version. It will also have strategy set to none because this is what we have set. And this is this results in an invalid CRD as per Kubernetes it's validation. It's none, but also has a, or we're trying to set it to none, but it also has a CI bundle. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It will have the CI bundle because yeah. because it can't be removed. Um, and that kind of so there was like a user who chimed into onto the issue and they they like they pasted some command that you builds to 
like remove CA injectors ownership of that. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm not sure if that's good enough upgrade path. Um, and I was wondering whether we would want to maybe like revert the change that removed the conversion webhook um, and somehow, because we will need to fix this issue anyway in CI injector, I think we are, because we are not the only consumers of CI injector anyway, and this problem somehow needs to be fixed. Like people at the moment, if you use CI injector, you are not able This is unfortunate. You know. I, I, I assume she's frozen for everyone else as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She looks very serious, like she's presenting a, a real, a real important talking point at a conference. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello. Hello. And she's frozen again. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, can you hear me at all? We can hear you now, yes. Awesome. Um, at which point did I disappear? Uh, Maybe we I need to change something seconds. in the conversion part of the CRD. I think. So right. We need to add a new patch to Site Manager to change how we do the conversion field. Or something is that right so not not having it to none but having it to something else or i was thinking to that per so it can only either be none or webhook if it is mm -hmm. webhook then we actually need to have the conversion webhook running um i was thinking that perhaps we could reinstate the conversion webhook in one seven patch a house ca injector could like Either CI injector could own, try to own all of those fields. Um, but so the whole of the conversion struct. Um, perhaps we can somehow via annotations communicate whether it should be webhook or not. Like I assume it, it may also like want to set it to none instead of us doing it explicitly in CRDs or CRD authors. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking that. First of all, we need to fix this in CI injector, I think. And secondly, I think maybe it's not a good enough upgrade pass for users to have to modify managed fields to upgrade if they use. So maybe we want to revert conversion webhook and try to like figure out how to fix this without people having to run. Like, Definitely feels like. Months. Like the server side apply is not finished like it needs like a server side delete or something um because this is the exact same problem with the kind of issuing condition thing like the same kind of idea but um what would we change in the ca injector to to fix this um Just pasted a link. I asked this question in APM machine, but I haven't replied. Um, so, like, one thing that I was thinking about that if CI injector was the manager of the whole of the conversion struct, like, so the strategy and the CI bundle, mm -hmm. then we could somehow, perhaps via annotations, communicate whether it should be set to none or should be set to webhook and the CI bundle should be injected. Although yeah. it may be a breaking change. It also kind of like overloads what the C injector is supposed to be doing. Like it just kind of feels a bit wrong. Uh, but yeah. so like I did see that Cube Kettle will default to server side apply to at some point. I guess as you say, if there will be some kind of upstream solution for this, then maybe we don't have to worry about this. But if there won't be, then basically you will not be able to use cube catalog. Like this will always be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the lack of support to force delete a field just um, seems like a bit of a requirement. Yeah, I guess like maybe we need to 
I'll probably try to ping again the APM machine and try to see if there's like, are we aware of if it's planned to? Is there a plan to do some sort of force delete or um, maybe we should uh, just yeah, address it, it? The person I spoke to alluded to that they were thinking about it. That was the kind of general phrase that they they said. Perhaps the injector. Um, I was trying to think about it. It's quite difficult. To solve. Um, we need a way to like communicate to CA injector, like as you say, to tell it to remove something that it owns. That's what it seems like remove something that it owns. But it doesn't really work, does it? Because the the problem occurs when it when it actually tries to like do the QT tail apply, right? So, yeah, because it's like also I think it's also a problem with the fact that there are two sources that are modifying these CRDs, and one is like one time static in attempt to install that doesn't retry, and the other one's a controller. So like, like the kube get apply just fails. It doesn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there isn't like any reconciliation as well. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I think maybe, I guess we probably are not the only ones who run into this. But can, is there no way for us to, um, in the CRD definition, do CA bundle equals like empty? Does that not work? What do you mean? In, in our CRD pass an empty string for CA bundle? yeah or whatever the equivalent would be whether that whether it work with null or empty string or like whatever the thing would be Does that work but from so when i so in the kubectl manifest like kubectl apply manifest like in that manifest set conversion webhook or strategy none ca bundle empty string you can't have conversion strategies set to none and have CA bundle set. Um, this is why it's failing at the moment mm -hmm. um, because it's invalid combination. But we it, can't, we can not define in the. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's, yeah, sorry. I'm tired of thinking out loud, to be honest, which isn't helpful. Sorry. Uh, I guess maybe we need to reach out to upstream more about this. Um, I guess we probably aren't the only ones who like run into this kind of issue. Um, I, I'm not sure what other takeaways there could be. Um, uh, like, yeah, I mean, the original issue obviously was about whether we actually want to reinstate that and just to make it easier for people to upgrade? Um, or do we think it's good enough that they have to like patch the CRDs to remove managed fields? I think in the meantime, like it's super valid to just tell people to use um, client side apply because that's basically what we're trying to get people to do when they upgrade anyway. Like, yeah. I don't, I, yeah, it doesn't like feel right to me because if you have already been using server side apply, then downgrading to client side apply. Um, and given the fact that server side apply is like kind of the mm -hmm. future. But as you say, um, when it comes to things like CRDs, they, it's on, it, they shouldn't be, well, what we're trying to say like they don't really get reconciled over like the ca injector is like such a special case i guess um i don't know i don't know but that is like that would work i guess i really can't say why
so we recommend that either they patch if they want to use server side apply or we or we or they just use client side apply whilst we fix CA mm -hmm. injector for like anything else. Yeah, I think that's certainly like the workaround until we can like, come up with a better solution. Um, like there's not many re like I can't think of a reason why you'd want to use the features of server side apply for a CRD. Um, like I asked uh, on that issue, I asked whether there were particular issues, uh, particular reasons why someone would do. There was one person who replied, and they basically said that they uh, one the reason was like I think the last applied annotations, although those have actually been made smaller in uh, one seven, mm. Mm. and that they just generally think it's a good practice in Kubernetes mm -hmm. to use server side apply. Yeah, I totally agree. But it's just like CRDs are like a weird special case. And then the CA injector is even more of a weird special case in this situation. Uh, and yeah, like another thing I was wondering about is I don't know, for example, Argo and other like installation mechanisms, whether they wouldn't run into the same issue. Um, not sure about that. I haven't looked into it yet. feels like maybe if I try and summarize, we're saying use client side apply for now, if that's at all possible as a workaround, no immediate decision on whether or not we're going to do anything further to sort of fix this on our side. And we'll keep on poking at SIG API machinery to try and get some sort of answer out of them, because it seems like this is something that needs to be fixed upstream. Is that fair to summarize? Definitely the last part. Um, I sort of still, yeah, I'm kind of on the edge. I mean, I probably slightly would, would prefer to revert and reinstall the conversion workload just so that people have better. Um, like I, I'm like, I'm not keen on telling anyone to do client side apply just because like they should be able to do server side apply if they want to, if they so want to, especially because it's not, it seems to be like the new preferred way. So. If it wasn't too much effort, I would still prefer to maybe install the conversion, reinstate the conversion webhook, but I'm also not like, it's kind of like 70, 30 for me. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. Like, um, I think like when I've been telling them to use client side apply, it's like if they're desperate for 1.7, then like they can use that today. But certainly I agree we should have a, an actual fix for this um, because like i don't i don't necessarily think that the fix will we will have will be able to move us from like i haven't really thought through the fix i'm not sure if the fix is not going to be is going to be such that it will be um if there won't be like a need for some sort of mid uh, mid release where the conversion webhook is enabled, then the fix does something like it changes some field managers, and then there's a release where it's being set to none, perhaps in con C injector or something like that. So I'm not sure if the fix will be a fix for this issue. Fix will be a fix for C injector and this issue in general. We can't, yeah, but it'd have to be like two like uh, minor releases. But we can't expect users to like we can expect users to upgrade from 170 to 180 rather than having to go to 174 to 180 if that makes sense like it'll take a while to get that fix pushed out i guess is it uh it may be feeling like we're not going to reach a consensus on this in this meeting and we might want to move on to the next item just so we don't run out of time for it um depending on how long that will take is it sounds like this it would be worth maybe putting out some comms about in the main cert manager channel on kubernetes slack and maybe on the cert manager dev google group so that 
Like, there's a heads up, just like a, you may run into this gotcha when you upgrade, so bear this in mind, kind of thing. And then, sounds good to me. I think also maybe if, like Upstream said, what is kind of like a recommended way how to do it, or how for people how to deal with it, and that could also be helpful. So yeah, if we if if there is a workaround and we give that to people in comms, then we can always just point back at the comms and say just do this thing and and that'll move people forward. So yeah, I, I guess continue discussion on the issue um does anyone want to send out those comms yeah i'm happy to do that uh i'll try the commands first and then i'll see sound um good stuff so uh, i guess we'll move on to the final bit just to make sure that we've got enough time for that uh, first though maybe um baron do you have anything you wanted to raise or are you just sort of here chilling and listening in. That's totally fine if so. Frantically scrambling to type out a response. I'll tell you what, if, if you do have anything, then feel free to just um, type it out and we can come back to that. We'll move on for now. Um, so the last thing is, should we run the E2E feature gate with alpha stuff disabled for queue versions periodically once a day. Um, I don't know who put that in. Uh, yeah, I put that in. Sorry, I didn't put my name up. Uh, it was a quick one. I think I said, or have said this a couple of times in passing, just assuming it would be fine. But I guess it'd be, it's better just be here, but it's a quick one. So we've got a lot of feature gates now, which is fine um for different components or whatever um the way we're currently testing things isn't necessarily the best um or like it's not we don't have great coverage i think um so um it was to ask whether we should run a daily periodic where we um set all the alpha or set all the feature gates to false um so like all beta is false too. Um, it's really not one to pay for all the Kubernetes versions. Um, I assume that'd be fine. It's just like another eight end-to-end -end tests or whatever it is. Seems unambiguously good to me. Uh, as long as we don't run out of resources, but then like I, these could be run anytime, can't they? But when they won't conflict with um, other tests. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, or run them kind of three o'clock in the morning, Europe ish yeah. time. Um, cool, that's fine. I'll add that um, as a PR to the testing repo probably tomorrow. Sound. Anyone else want to say anything on that topic? It seems kind of open and close to me. Yeah, I thought before. It's because I think this came up because the server side apply stuff replaces a feature, whereas before our alpha gates just added features. So we just turned on all the alpha, so which means that we would test everything that we wrote tests for. But now we don't. It's a good idea because we don't want our old config to drift. We don't want our old code to drift away from working without us knowing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, I have actually thought about that statement a bit more. And like, whilst that's true in principle like i'm sure there is like some if statement or something somewhere for example that we're not running or whatever like there's always something right so safe than sorry better safe than sorry indeed um so that brings us to the end of the agenda that we had in the document. Uh, does anyone on the call have anything random that they wanted to bring up that wasn't on the agenda? Open call for proposals. I should uh, get a little like stream deck that lets me play elevator music when I ask these kinds of questions. So. Uh, nothing really. I've just been working on the la over the last couple of days on uh, bringing our gateway API support up to the latest alpha. But I guess this is the open source meeting, so can bring it up and 
as a work in progress PR. So if you're interested, you can look at it, but otherwise I'll raise it properly in the next uh, week. Have there been like interesting changes in regards to um, the parts that Sort Manager touches on? Um, so the main change from our point of view is that everything used to use label selectors and now they use specific, uh, very specific object references. So before when you attached a route to a gateway, you just gave it some labels and then gateways would label select on uh, virtual services or routes. But now when you create a route, you explicitly attach it to one or more gateways. It's just more explicit. And also what's more annoying for us, I guess, is that listeners can now present different TLS certificates based on matching. It just makes the code to handle it a little bit more complicated. So it'll, it'll need more testing. <laughs> Cool. I was wondering maybe there were like some changes in regards to the HTTP routes versus um, the other resource. I have already forgotten what the issue was, but yeah. we kind of had some design discussions about that early on. I, I was comfortable with the whole Gateway API. Now I have forgotten everything. <laughs> I have no idea what. Oh, by the way, uh, external DNS will get support for uh, Gateway API. Which is great because I like external DNS. I will probably not use Gateway API with external DNS, anyways. There are a lot of features that we don't need in Set Manager because all we're using it for is to add another way of solving HTTP01 challenges. But there's a whole load of filtering it can do. Well, it's a spec, so it's up to the implementers of the spec. So it can do like traffic shaping, traffic direction, like weights based on various metadata about the connection or HTTP headers. So I'm glad we don't have to touch that too. <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> oh, by the way, the external DNS, uh, yeah, there is a proposal and there is a huge text explaining the algorithm for choosing the right domain uh, to be like, because the XML DNS needs to pick up the IP attached to uh, certain routes. So uh, there's this big algorithm for picking up the right thing because the um, Gateway API has many ways of, uh, uh, there are many places where you can have a domain host name, you know, and related to our meeting, but. Another DNS thing that's unrelated to our meeting, but which is interesting, um, on the cert manager channel, I think it was first asked yesterday, someone has an active, active DNS configuration where when Let's Encrypt try to validate a DNS record, they could get either of two name servers, which are authoritative for their domain and he's asking how he might go about you doing such a thing in cert manager where you essentially need to add two dns challenges for um any given that because let's encrypt could get either dns provider i think is the the summary of it which is this thread it's kind of an interesting thing and it kind of like okay. it feels like you can kind of imagine how we might have a dns a one provider which will create two challenges in the back end, like the Unix T command, which is why I suggested that as a name, and sort of wait until both of them are done and then make the challenge done. Like you can you can imagine a sort of special DNS provider that will actually have two backends. But I don't it's just kind of an interesting use case I'd not really thought about. <laughs> I, I suspect we're not going to do this anytime soon unless this user commit like raises a PR, but it's an interesting case. I would tell them to just write their own webhook if they're, as soon as they're doing something crazy. That is what they're doing, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, what is... Go on, sorry. I was going to say, uh, it was just a question, what, what is active-active DNS and why would you want it? They have 
they have two name servers which are both authoritative for the from, from entirely different providers which are authoritative for um their domain and answering queries for their domain at the same time uh, I see. and that's like you... a is that like a load balance reason why you'd want to have that or like a uh not a load balance um What's the word? Redundancy. Resilience. Yeah. Yeah. Redundancy. If, right. if so one when, fails. So you, when when you request the this this their domain or Apex, then you you get two name servers, right? Two different name servers. Okay. Like, as many I, as I guess like. no. That's 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 a question actually. Yeah, <laughs> I, can... Because I have I didn't know you could have two different authoritative uh, like. Mo most do like yeah. most domains do it's just this in this uh, case it's two different companies that are providing it two different providers entirely rather than just two names uh, if you do it uh, yes like, so aws gives you four but they are all updated with the same api call and it, the api call doesn't return until they're all updated um, google have uh, four but they're all google's name servers So AWS could, is cool uh, because it gives you that all of the AWS responders are on different top level domains in case there's a problem with .com. That's it's serious forward thinking, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just, um, it was an interesting thing because I'd not really thought that someone might have that situation, but someone does. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, the other thing that I could I could mention is the website branches thing that I've harped on about in the past few stand-ups, which, I, I, as I said before, I've thought about this a lot, and I genuinely cannot see a single reason not to do this, apart from it will take a little bit of time to do this. Like I can't think of any downsides at all to this, Like e not even like out there esoteric downsides. It's just all upside to me. It, for context, the the multi-version tool that we have currently clones the repo 15 times, one for each release branch, and then just copy pastes the markdown files from each clone into master and then builds the website. Like that's it's it's not using anything else from those old branches. It's just using the markdown files. So I don't know why we wouldn't just commit them to master. I I, I can't imagine why we wouldn't do it at all. Like the, I think I agree with you. There's no reason why you'd add documentation to an older branch, but not want it in the current website. That's just nonsensical, right? It, it would kind of make sense if we were deploying the old website as a standalone website. On yeah, yeah, exactly. Basis. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've, when they're mm -hmm. all they're all one website at the end, and and forever it, will be. And like, e even if we wanted to just change like a typo that was only in the release notes for the website at version 1.3, the only thing that, like the current system means we have to change it on a branch and then change master to deploy it. Whereas if we ha just had it all on master, we just change it on master because that's where it is. Like it's one commit rather than cherry pick and then changing master. Like it just, it seems clear as daylight. And upgrading is just a copy contents yeah. into directory. Copy paste Continue. rather than create a branch, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I, I would argue is simpler mm -hmm. um, I agree. in a lot of ways. The only thing I'm missing is uh, why is it like this now? I don't. I just don't know what the justification is for it. Because it seems I've, it seems silly. <laughs> I've got no idea. And, and so it's just I've not from Kubernetes. It. Yeah. No, this is a completely like custom tool that was built specifically for cert managers, not used by Kubernetes. Yeah. But pr pr previously, cert manager was using read the, read the docs, which would pick up each branch and expose it as a as a versioned documentation. And my understanding is that because we wanted to keep the same behavior, we did this without thinking that there would be a, an easier way, like you proposed, Ashley. Could well be the uh, case. That's my. That's that. That's why. That's why I think it's so complex. It's because we wanted to have the, the old read the docs behavior. I think it was also because the documentation used to live in the same repository. Oh. 
I think that might be another reason. Hmm. Um, which in that case, like it maybe made a bit more sense to do the branch thing. But... That that would be pretty compelling, yeah. But um... no, no, it lifted and shifted out. I, I could see, I could see that for sure. Yeah, um, there's so many, so long ago. I don't remember. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of reaching the point where, like, lazy consensus will decide that we just yeah, yeah. do this because it will make yeah. it will make the website refresh a lot easier. The, I, I I initially wrote this document with two other bits in it, like two bonus things that I think should change, uh, and I removed them so that this doc was more sort of clear and focused but things like our supported releases page shouldn't be on older release branches like it, it has no use beyond like the only version you ever want is the latest one you don't care what the supported releases were six um... months ago you only care what they are now and if you do care what they were six months ago for some weird reason you go to git and browse git six months ago you don't check on the website yeah so there's other stuff like i there's a difference between docs for cert manager, which should be versioned by cert manager version, and docs for the cert manager project, which should always be current, like the contributing guidelines, what it releases. They they should only be on master. But that involves moving them to a different path is a much bigger change. And I'm not going to uh, buy that off anytime soon. One counterpoint um, would be um, the size of the Git history. Um, like if images were copied, I, as I, text doesn't matter, but images, if, if images are copied every release, and it balloons Git, oh. which is remember, remember that Git uses the shell of each blob, so it, it's it's going to you reuse the same object. So if I have the same image in multiple yeah. places, it, it will reuse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and but... it's still keeping that because we have everything in commits currently, right? But. Uh -huh. Uh, they're just on separate branches, so we still have the same thing. They're just on branches rather than the, all being on the master branch. But about the supported releases, you want like a clear way to see what versions of Kubernetes are supported, say for like I don't know 1.1, because if you're like upgrading step by step from some really old release, you want to be able to see. Um, well, we, we do have that on the supported releases page for every version of Cert Manager currently. Just I'm saying we. We don't need this if you go to, uh, I've gone too far back. <laughs> if you go to. Yeah, sorry, Ashley, I didn't realize. I thought for some reason, I thought we are updating this releases page to like just have the latest for, um, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying the 1.41 1 that I just linked shouldn't exist. That should redirect to the yeah, latest Yeah, that makes one. perfect sense. Exactly, Jake, yeah. I did, I did have another one as well, but. <laughs> I think I've done enough website gripes. Uh, That's so, a good thing to bring up. Yeah. So uh, it it would it would bring me great joy <laughs> to get rid of the the branching thing on the website. Um, spark joy. That was that was the meme, wasn't it? Uh, I I don't have anything else. Uh, if anyone else has anything else, please shout now. Otherwise, we might gain an extra five minutes of our evenings. Um, I'll rewrite the injector. <laughs> rewrite that manager. Yeah, cash. Um, so yeah, if anyone has watched through all of this to the end, thank you for doing that. I, your, your dedication is much admired on YouTube. Um, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you for joining, Varun. Um, thank you, everyone else, for joining. Uh, See you later. Like that, guys. Right.